The flip side of board games is sponsored in part this month by Peacekeeper Games, publisher of the puzzly game Gearworks. Take on the role of budding inventors intent on proving your mettle. Play your gears carefully as clever card placement helps you control areas of the board and reward the parts you need to build fantastical contraptions and score points at the end of the game. It's an interesting marriage of steampunk and Sudoku. A special bundle is currently available on their website, which includes a free deluxe playmat. And a new Kickstarter campaign will be running from March 12 to 31, 2024. Go check it out. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Glad to see so many people here and in the chat. Uh, already kicking it. Hey, hey, Sam. Good, good to see you, Kabuki Kid. Thank you for being here. Tom is here as well. Thank you to my moderators. I appreciate y'all. Matthew Vincent is here. Hola. Hola a todos. Uh, hola todo el mundo. Okay. Expected paths of civilization to be noisier. Well, it possibly could be here in the near future. Um... Matthew David is here. David is here. David is here. All right. I think that's it. Bushman is showing up. All right. Since Sam is streaming this just for me, had to be here. Otherwise, he'd send a hitman. No, I wouldn't send a hitman. Just a team of ninjas. Uh, nothing really to uh, be afraid about at all. Uh, Fee is here. Good to see you. Thank you for being here, Fee. Um, says hello to everyone. That is very cool. Hello to all the world. Hello to everyone. Uh, all right, so this is the single player mode, solo mode for Path of Civilization. Now, <clears throat> I feel like I'm playing this game off the hinges here because we've played it. Um, this will be my fifth. This will be my fifth game of it. Um, I played it once at Dice Tower West, uh, played it once with uh, just me and Jess off camera, uh, teaching her how to play. Played uh with um uh me and jess and jt and mel and then we played online two player jess and i and now i'm playing solo mode so uh we're getting to that point where uh i think um uh, i'll be good doing the review of it here in the near future so uh that is coming up i just want to put my uh but best foot forward, I guess you could say. Um, or maybe like a hello world message in programming. Right. That is something you can do. Um, so everybody's here. And Bushman, if you weren't going to be here, if you weren't here, I'd be having some questions. Because you specifically asked for this. And that's cool. It was my decision. You didn't force me to do it. I decided to do it. You don't like it, do you? <laughs> so, uh, that is, you should win easy with all that experience. Not really. Not really. Not really. Although, I did choose not the easiest mode, but one of the easy modes. They basically have one, two, three, four, five modes of difficulty here. And they basically range with easy... Uh, intermediate and difficult, or or hard, expert, whatever. Um, so I chose the harder of the two easy modes. So this only has one bar. Um, the next one up, which is the lowest intermediate level, is two bars. And then you have three bars, which is the higher intermediate level. Uh, that's just my interpretation of it. And then all four bars is like you want to be dead, don't you? You want to die. So that is what it is. I thought we were all AI here. Every hello is a hello world, David Brownlee says. LOL. <laughs> um, so the gist of the game, I try to do this at every... Uh, I, I try not to assume that people have seen the other ones. I know that um, many of you that are here right now have seen them, uh, but I'm hoping that you guys aren't the only ones to watch this. So just a general overview of what's happening. The game's going to take place over the course of nine rounds. That remains true with the solo mode. Um, and we'll talk about the solo mode setup 
immediately after this. All right, so basically what we're doing here is we are going to be choosing technology cards uh, from our hand. Uh, we're gonna choose one to get rid of and the other four we're going to choose to activate. Um, those things are going to be giving us um, more cubes on certain things. Let me go ahead and switch down to the other screen. Uh, it'll just be better. So uh, one side, the B side, will give us uh, cubes. And those cubes will go into these different bins here, which will allow us to do certain things throughout the course of the game. Uh, generally speaking, uh, scribes are worth uh, history points, which will basically turn into victory points. Uh, there is a religion track here where cubes here are going to pay for advancement uh, to the next level. And then at the end of the game, that's going to be worth a certain number of points. These down here are going to be um, uh, little bonuses that it'll give you throughout the course of the game. Then you also have uh, population cubes that'll go here, which will allow you to purchase leaders uh, to hire, hire leaders for your civilization. And then this one right here, which is upside down. Uh, this one, uh, if you have cubes here, it'll help you pay for the different monuments that you can put, uh, that you can build with your civilization. Uh, cubes that go over here become military units, and they will add two to your military power during combat. Combat will happen at the end of all of these red uh, uh, turns. So at the end of uh, round four, six, eight, and nine, we're going to have a battle. Uh, we're going to be battling in Thermopylae, the fall of Mero, Shimor, and the Somme. Uh, so those are the four battles that we're going to be having this uh, game. Um, and so uh, the cubes that go here will help us defeat the, uh, the threat of that age, so to speak. Um, all of this is basically... Uh, hurting us down the idea of being able to score more points uh, by the end of the game. Now, that is phase B. Phase C is where we will actually go out here and use our cubes to purchase those different things. Uh, except for the red ones over here and the yellow ones over here, those are taken care of uh, during the challenge and battle phase at the ends of rounds three, four, five, three through nine, basically. Then we go into phase D, and D, wherever you see circles, so if you see squares, that means putting cubes out. If you see circles, it means you're going to be able to uh, raise your, uh, your research in these different technologies. So you've got culture, science, uh, spirituality, uh, military, and I think um, technology or something to that effect. I can't remember what this one is. I never can remember what the brown one is. Why can't I remember that? Because I've got too much other stuff in my brain. At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, so anyway, you, you, you have these different um, kinds of technology and whenever you see a circle with that symbol in it, it means you're simply going to be moving these guys up the track. And these uh, these tracks are what allow you to purchase new technology cards for your hand uh, to use during the course of the game. So as you can see from the bottom here to the top, you can see how they get a little bit more um, juicier, I guess you could say, the higher you go up these different tracks. Uh, so, and I try to keep these in the same order that these are in for your viewing benefit. But uh, whenever you purchase one of these cards, it goes directly into your hand to be used in the next round. And it's also going to give you a number of bonuses, depending on what card or what level you, you get, that you'll be able to immediately uh, put into play. Uh, so uh, we simply go through those phases. Uh, then in the F phase of each round, we check over here to see uh, the challenges and the bonus card. Uh, the bonus uh, of each of these things, they are um, uh, associated with certain kinds of technology. So these first two cards are having to do with spirituality. Then you have a technology here, uh, a technology challenge and a bonus, and then you have another spirituality bonus here, uh, challenge and bonus as well. So uh, one of the things that um, we are ha we I had to do uh, for setup with with the solo player is that I had to make sure that none of these cards were uh, players comparing themselves to each other because uh, the automata is not going to be 
um, battling for any of that. They have a set number of points down at the end of these cards that they are going to be able to score at the end of the game regardless of anything else. And basically, you're just trying to get higher than this victory point total. So let me see if I can get my phone working here as we did yesterday. And we'll see if that's working. Maybe. Yep, there it is. Good, good, good. So now that I can kind of show you guys uh, what this looks like, I will try to keep as steady a hand as possible. So as we're looking at the automata board, you have basically up here uh, a leader that's chosen. So basically we're playing against Rome, but it's the vanilla version of Rome. If you flip it over, there's also a... A Roman version of Rome, which is basically they always have plus one than uh, whatever the potential uh, threat strength is. Uh, but this card here also determines the preferences for all of their um, cards, which will come into play when we are purchasing the leaders and the monuments. Uh, so there you have that. And then each of the different cards that you've chosen, you have some cards, I'll show you the backs so that you can see. You have some cards that are intermediate cards, and then you have other ones that are easy cards, and then I believe it's this one, yeah. Then you have others that are difficult cards. So there's basically three different levels, but when you turn those over, these are going to take effect in phase C, when we are purchasing all of those different things. So in phase C, we'll see that in round three, they're going to go up one level. Now, when they go up a level over here, they will be able to, well, if the automata goes up to a level that I haven't reached yet, we'll basically flip over one of those tiles and randomly determine uh, a bonus that, that, each, that I will get following it. If I go up there first, it's normal. Uh, I'll choose one of those two tiles down there to be my bonus. Then, as we're talking about uh, buying the monuments, uh, they're not going to buy a monument until phase four. And they'll simply uh, purchase one monument. That's what that's there. And uh, they'll try to purchase the one that is their preference. If that is, uh, If that's not available, then they'll go with this one. If that one's not available, then they'll go with this one, and so forth and so on. Uh, same thing is true for when we're buying leaders. Uh, in round two, they'll buy a leader. In round three, they'll buy a leader. And then in round six, eight, and nine, they're going to buy leaders. And you follow uh, their preference just like normal, just like with the uh, monuments. In a battle phase, uh, you'll see that in round four, they are going to be equal with the, th the threat, whatever it is. So basically... Uh, these guys are going to be up here just like that for that first battle. Then in the next battle, they're going to be whatever the bat the threat level is, which is going to be five. Oh, sorry for the glare, which is going to be five. So in the next one, they're going to be up here and they will be one below just like that. And so that will uh, keep going as the game goes on. A uh, couple of other things. Let me put it back to the other one now. Um, so a couple of other things will happen, basically. Uh, at the end of each challenge phase or battle, uh, the preference of the technologies for the Romans will change. Uh, so, for example, uh, three is a, spiritual, is a spiritually based uh, challenge and bonus. So at the end of that, they're going to switch places basically here. Uh, every time we have a different, um, uh, a different uh, challenge happens, whatever preference is associated to the challenge will move two spaces to the right. Um, and I believe, because I didn't see it anywhere, if it's already at the five, it doesn't go anywhere. So, because it will happen more than that. But at the end of the battle, if the automata was higher than me, the, um, the, uh, the military strength will go down a spot. If it's equal to me, it stays there. And if it's less than me, it will go to the left one spot. 
So it kind of fluctuates what the preference is, which is different because most of these, I mean, all of these are set on the other player boards. So that's a little bit different than the multiplayer game, but I think it's to simulate those differences in the different cultures and to provide a better, you know, uh, a, a better opponent, so to speak. But that's generally speaking how the automata works um, as far as what they're going to be purchasing. And these are all randomly chosen. You can see that, oops, 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 oops. Stand back up, card. Stand back up. All right. So all of these are, are basically chosen um, uh, at random. You, you, it does say that since I'm using the Egyptians, we shouldn't use the Egyptians. You use one of the other four. But then I just randomly determined which one would come up. Uh, these, it tells you how many cards you should use from each level. So I just randomly did that as well, taking out cards for the other levels that, I, that, that were already chosen in lower levels. So that's pretty much how that goes. All right, let's see here. What have we got? Um, uh, coasters, AA, AKA cube holders. That is correct. KK just came up with another use for game topper add-ons, cube holders. Well, I think that's always been the case. You could always use your, uh, your, your cup holders for uh, component trays of sorts. And they actually come with a whole lot of different uh, uh, variations to them just for that specific purpose. So yes, you are correct. Uh, thank you for doing this. You are absolutely welcome, Bushman. Um, James is here. James Orr. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Um, reminds me of my early Rotto vids. <laughs> is that a compliment? <laughs> I know his videos are pretty cool, man. He's got, he's got some pretty cool, uh, green screen technology working for him and that. And I know I can, I just haven't had a chance to look at it yet. We talked about that the other day, but, uh, we'll get there. Uh, hola everyone. Hello, Nuno. Good to see you. And, uh, just saying hi to everybody else. All right. So to reiterate, uh, the only times that these will come into play are during the C. These three will come in on, on phase C when we're using our cubes to purchase some of these different things. And then the red one will come into effect um, when we're actually doing a battle. But there's that. All right, so I've chosen the Egyptians to go first. That gives me a bump up in um in population which gave me a uh cube here for uh for purchasing leaders it also gave me a cube over here as a unit so i am basically starting with uh two strength two military rather than just zero so that is that now i'm going to go ahead and um choose which card I'm going to get rid of and which ones we're going to bump up here. Um, yeah, I think, golly, golly gee whiz. Um, what are we doing here? Yeah, I think I might want to do that. I'll do that and that, and I will get rid of... Who needs tools? I don't need tools. All right. So that's what I've chosen for my first round here. And next, what we're going to do is we get our cubes. Don't have any. So that goes by the wayside. And C, what happens? Nothing happens in phase C over here. I don't have anything that I can use in phase C either. Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Two level one monuments should be out here. So we have Constantinople and the Colosseum. All right. So that was supposed to happen at the beginning of the round. I apologize for screwing that up. All righty then. So we have Constantinople and the Colosseum. Constantinople is basically going to give me two cubes down here immediately if I purchase it. And the Colosseum will give me a bump up of two over here if I purchase it. So we'll see what happens. Um, but nobody is able to purchase anything just yet. So we move on to round D 
which is bumping up on our tracks. So I'm going to go up one spirituality and one military, just like that. And then we can purchase things out here. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and use my spirituality and purchase a worship card that immediately gives me a cube in the blue just like that and then these will come back up into my hand and we're ready to go for next round there then what we would normally do is we would check to see if there is a challenge and a bonus right now there isn't because we're too early in the game so this clicks up to round two. We look at round two for the card, and there is plus one more um, monument here. So the Library of Alexandria has come up, which basically gives you a bump up in brown and a bump up in orange immediately, and it's worth two points at the end of the game. And then two leaders will show up as well. So... Uh, um, Agonis, Agonis of Thessaly, and Wu Jitan. Wu Jitan comes up as far as that. So, uh, uh, Agnes of Thessaly is, while she's alive, she will, um, whenever you purchase a monument, you get a victory point, two victory points immediately. Then, after she dies, uh, uh, is it a she? Agnes. That's got to be a she. Yeah, Agnes. Duh. Uh, after she dies, for every monument that you buy after that, it still gives you a point, an extra point, immediately. That's in addition to the uh, monuments that they're worth at the end of the game as well. So those come out, and now we are back to uh, determining what we're going to do. So I'm going to play Worship up there. Which one am I going to get rid of? Um, I think... Who needs culture? We're going to do that. Um, and then we're going to go with this and that. And then this down here. All right. So uh, round two, phase B comes up. I get another cube out here. And then this one doesn't give me a cube, so nothing happens there. Phase C, uh, two, two. Okay, they're going to purchase a leader this time. So we'll get to that in just a second. So I, first of all, must use both of my cubes here to go up. I can flip these over and choose which one I want. Oh boy, it's blue. Yeah, I think I'll take, I'll take that right there. And then this just gets flipped over because it's no longer there. All right, but that is that and that is that. Um, monuments, don't buy anything. Monuments over here. If, you know, it goes to this one and then it will buy the leftmost one. So leftmost, it'll buy Wuji Tan. And we'll just go ahead and put this over here. It's not going to be worth points at the end of the game for them or anything like that. It's not going to give them any bonus, but it just takes it away from me. That's basically all that does. Um... Then we go to D. So I'm going to go up one more on military and then up one on science as well. Um, what is the science one? Gives you a brown. Nah. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my military to purchase archery. That will give me an immediate bump up right there. Um and this goes into my hand with these to get ready for next round. And at this point, we are going to move to round three. Boom. So this is going pretty freaking quick. Dad gum. Uh, round three, another leader comes out right here. So Safo. Safo is out here, so basically every, uh, you know, while Safo is still alive, he'll give you an extra bump up on your culture technology uh, as long as he is your leader. Hmm, that's interesting. Alrighty, 
Well, let's see what we've got here. Now we go to phase A of planning. And I'm definitely going to use that. And hmm, probably going to use that. Nah, that's going to go over here. And then this will also go over here. Oh, one, two. That's not going to give me the four. But let's see. Do I want to do? No, I'm going to keep it that way. Then this will go down here. And we don't need fire either. We figured that out a long time ago. Um, so it's boring. That's so yesterday. That's so last decade. Uh, all right. So we go into phase B. Phase B will give me a... Um, a uh, soldier over there, a military unit. And then we can purchase things with the stuff that we have. We are in round three. So round three is basically they're just going to come up here and nothing happens. Uh, round three, no, nothing's bought here. But round three, another one comes up. So they definitely are going to take Safo off the uh, list here. And nothing else happens there. And now we go to phase... Uh, D. So I'm going to go up one, two on military, and then one more on science. Um, sure. I'm going to use one on science to bump this one up, and that gives me a bump up here on my brown technology track as well. All of these will come back. Hmm. All right, so let's see here. I was joking about the coaster. Sam, you take my comments too seriously. That's okay, David. I don't, I'm not really taking it seriously. I really don't. I'm really not. I just, I just wanted to take the opportunity that you afforded me to talk about one of our sponsors uh, because Game Toppers is one of our sponsors. So I did want to just take that opportunity. I, I wasn't taking it seriously. None, not at all. Uh, don't know where the goat emoji came from. <laughs> Because Game Toppers is the goat. That's why. Uh, it just knew what you wanted to say. Uh, let's see here. Got to be honest, a little bit overwhelming. Safo was a she. I apologize. Okay. I didn't know that. But now I do. Uh, assuming they meant the poet. Yep. It's too bad we can't see Sam's player board better. I apologize. Um, I can. I mean, I can. I can help out with that if you want me to. It just... I, I have a, you know, I got to use both of my hands out here. So I could use um, uh, this like that. But I mean, I don't know what benefit it would do. I'll do it for a turn. How's that? I'll do that for a turn. And, and that'll give you an idea of, of what you can be expecting to see. All right. Um, so I've picked all of that up. Now we go to the... Um, the challenge. Now, the challenge. I'll go ahead and pull the challenge over here so that we can see it. And you can kind of know what's going on there. All right. So, we come here. And there. All right. So, as we're looking at the uh, card here, it says, If Confucius is in play, then everybody gets a free philosopher. Since Confucius is not in play... So, since it's not in play, we need to put Confucius into play. And this is going to be a little bit difficult. He is going to be... <laughs> this is why I wanted to be uh, careful here. There he is. All right. I found Confucius. So, we're going to put him into play. Bing, bing, bada boom. That was not easy to do with one hand. I'm just saying. So, now that Confucius is in play we can now purchase Confucius. But that was just something that this card did. Um, and now he can be purchased if that's going to be the case. Now, the bonus that we get for the round is that we look at all of our blue cards, all of our blue stuff that we have, and we add that to any cubes that might be in the yellow scribes folder. So I look at the cards that I've purchased and I have one blue card. Okay, 
So it's one plus one, that equals two. All right, so I come over here and I get two victory points. And I've got two victory points now. Then I take the victory points that I got and I divide it by two. So that turns into one and that gives me one bump up on my brown technology track right there. Okay? So that is the resolution of our first challenge and bonus card in round three. All right, so now I'm gonna switch back to this other thing so I can use both my hands again. And uh, this will come back over here. We will switch to round four. At the end of round four, we're gonna have a battle. Uh, and at the end of round four, we have two more um, monuments come out. Uh, but they're from, they're from level two, and that's the wrong place anyway. So we've got to take the ones out now. Oh, that's a two. I was in the wrong place. Okay, so now we have some twos coming out. So we have Alhambra and Moai. So these are some more guys that are coming out there. And then we're going to have two level two leaders come out as well. So we take the ones out, and we have, let me move these over a little bit so we can get this in there. A little bit more. And another one. So the Dalai Lama, Anima of Zyra, and there we have it. Now, after the after the uh, after the bonus. So here we go. Okay, after a challenge, the challenge the the interest token corresponding to the challenge type shifts two spaces to the right. So since it was a blue challenge, this one right here will shift one two spaces over. Uh, it can only go one, but it will go over there just like that. All right, and that is that. Um, so now we're in round four. We have the new peeps out and the new monuments. So we're good to go that way. Uh, and now we're gonna, oh, I purchased writing, what? Oh, this was supposed to come out. All right, so round f four. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Okay, here we go. Um, I said I was going to do this. All right. So I'm looking at... Go ahead and use this here. You're going to get a shot of Strider down there too. But that's just the way it is. All right, here we go. Yeah, it is a table hog. That's correct. All right, so these are the cards that are in my hand right now. I've got worship, hunting, archery, rituals, and writing. So this is going to give me a cube in the uh, yellow <laughs> coaster. That one's not going to give me anything, any cubes. This one's going to give me another unit for soldiers. This one's not going to give me anything. And that one's going to give me another philosopher in the uh, spirituality track. So those are the things that I have to kind of think about. What do I want to do this round? Uh, the same card is going to be used to uh, give me a bump up in the military and science, military, uh, technology, spirituality, 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 and that. So I'm probably going to get rid of rituals because I've got a lot of bump ups in spirituality and other cards. So I'm going to do that. I will probably use... Hmm... I do want to keep my military going, so I'm going to use him for military. I'm going to use put this over here uh, to give me more of that, and then I'd like to get some more 
uh, of those as well. And then this will come down here so that in phase B, I'm going to get a cube in the blue and a cube in the red. And then in phase D, I'm going to get bumps up on three of my tracks, religion, or rather spirituality, culture, and military. So that kind of gives you. Now, I could have got more bumps up over here uh, in, in technology, but it's just not what I'm choosing to do right now. So uh, that, that's pretty much what the board is at. Another thing that we I should probably mention right here is that this number is indicative of how many of these bumps I can get. So this, since my population is here, I cannot get more than five cubes put out and I cannot get more than five bump ups in my technology tracks uh, ever um, until I move this up higher. Uh, so once it gets here, now I can have six cubes and six bumps up here. Now I can have seven and so forth and so on. So that's just uh, part, of, part of the thing there. So hopefully that gives you an idea of, of what the player board looks like and, and all that good stuff. All right. So uh, now we're gonna go into phase B. So we're gonna get our, our cubes. I'm gonna put one cube out here uh, for my worship card and then my archery card gets me another cube over here. Um, now we go into phase C, where we're using our cubes to purchase things, and we are in round four. So nothing happens in round four for religion here. Uh, round four here, he's going to purchase uh, a monument. So he's going to look at uh, the, he wants the Colosseum. He wants the Colosseum badly. Um, and so that will be that. Um, and then round four, nothing happens over there. I can't purchase anything yet, so that's that's pretty much nullified. So now we go over to D. I'll get a bump up in red, uh, blue, and green like that. And then I'm going to use um, I'm going to use my four military to purchase artillery and artillery is going to give me a bump up of one two on the military track my my uh legacy military ship um military ship is not a word but you, you can my legacy military level there you go moves up and i also get a another one here in the blue for having artillery in there so that will be the end of that. And these five cards will come right here. Now we're doing the Battle of Thermopylae. And so I'll put the card right there. We'll come over and I'll explain to you how this is going to work in just a few seconds. Uh, let's see here. All right, so the Battle of Thermopylae. So the the um, non well the the external threat power is three, and we've already uh, accounted for that on the military track right there. So then we come back, and and these are the different levels that are going to be awarded for the battle. So whoever has the most strength is going to get. Uh, a cube in the in the in the scribe. They're going to also get a cube in the population, and they're also going to get three points. Second place will get one or the other of these, and they'll get one point. And then third place will only get one point. And if there's four or five players, uh, fourth and fifth don't get anything at all. So how do you uh, how do you determine who had the most power? Well, we look over here. And everybody's cubes that has been over there are worth two military strength. So that's six plus the three that I already had. So one of these cubes is uh, put up here at nine because I already have three plus six. So I have nine power. All right. Does that make sense? Then we simply look at who is in first place. I'm in first place, then second, and they're tied for second. So uh, they don't get, uh, the automata doesn't get any bonuses here, but I just wanted to make sure that I got first. So I come over here and I'm able to get uh, one cube 
in the yellow like that over there. Then I also get one cube over here in the purple. And then I also get three victory points. So I'm just going to turn these two victory points in for a five. Okay. And that's the end of the battle. At the end of the battle, these soldiers here will come back to my little thing. Our legendary, or rather our legacy military strength is there. But you'll notice that the next battle, he's going to be at five. So I just go ahead and put him right up there at five. And then he's going to be minus one. So he's going to be right there just like that. Okay, does that make sense? So that's how battles work. Now... I won the battle. Let me go back here, and I have to put my phone down. Now, I won the battle, so once I win a battle, I've beaten him. If the automata has a lower power, shift the military interest token one space to the left. So the military interest would shift one to the left if it could, but because it's already up at the top spot, it doesn't move. So that is that. So we'll go ahead and put the Battle of Thermopylae card right back over there. And we move the round marker up to five. In round five, we get one more level two. So we'll put that one right here. So the Porcelain Tower is here now. And we also get one more level two over here as well. So we're just going to put uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine right up here on top, just so that we can see where she is, you know, just to keep all things in order. We're gonna do this, I think. Well, let's do this, rather. That matters because we have to pick the leftmost one um, for the automata if they indeed purchase something. So now that is uh, uh, the first part. Now we go to our phase A of planning out things that we're going to do. Let's see here. <clears throat> um, uh, those tracks are nice. Yes, they are. Uh, definitely Table Hog, indeed. Evening Gamers, hello, Mikael. Uh, Mikael Hansen, hello, hello, good to see you. Thanks, Sam, you're welcome, Derek. Uh, anyone else I, I missed when I was uh, AFK? Um, this is a fun game, Mikhail says. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to buy this. And World Wonders, Derek says. <laughs> uh, Marshall Powers. Yeah, maybe. Color Up. Uh, Thermopylae. Sounds like a fun time. I don't know about that. Very easy bot in this solo game. Uh, and you already know the bot's final score when you start. That is correct. Uh, I so appreciate you giving me something to listen to on my drives home. Thank you, good sir. You are welcome, Ryan. I'm glad you're here. And thank you for being here, buddy. All right. So now we're going to go to our planning phase. And uh, let's see what I want to do here. I think I want to go with artillery. And uh, I think I also want to go with some worship. And then... I think we'll definitely go with riding and archery, and we're getting rid of hunting. We've discovered farming, I guess. Um, so that is that. So going on into the B phase, I'm going to get a cube over here in the military, and I'm also going to get one over here in the monuments, and I'm also going to get one over here in the religion. And uh, let's see, by five. Okay, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so now we uh, go ahead and purchase things that we can purchase. So we start with this. I'm going to use two. And we both go up one. Now I got to double check real quick. We both go up one, but I'm pretty sure if we both go up at the same time. <clears throat> Reveal both, reveal the two benefits and select the one you desire. So it's kind of uh, normal. So that and that is going to happen. Oh, wow. That's a, that's kind of a difficult choice. I already have one here and I can get them easily as well. Well, not as easily, but I think I can. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. Um, I think I'm just going to turn this one over. So I get a bump up. 
on the military track. <clears throat> then we come over here and um, round five, they're not going to purchase anything. No leaders are purchased by these guys. So, hmm. Monument, I can't afford, I can't afford any of the level twos. So I'm just sticking with the level, level ones over here. Um, Confucius looks like a better leader for me going forward because I don't know that I'm going to be able to purchase a whole lot of these things. So we're going to keep this. Confucius is my leader. Um, and another bonus is, is that he's going to bump this up, uh, give me another bump up right now. So that's going to be pretty cool uh, coming in. Uh, so this I had to use my two, my two there. Come over here. I can't purchase any. Uh, round five, they don't purchase any wonders either. Uh, so nothing happens there. And so now we go to phase D. I get one, two, three, four, five, and I'm at the five population level right now. So I'm really kind of getting my max right now. So I have to find some way to bump that up. So I'm going to get one, two, three blue, one, two, three blue. Then I also get a brown and I also get a green uh, culture. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's what I'm talking about. I'm going to use all four of these to get my sacred texts on. And that allows me to put two blues out there. And it also gets me another bump up right here on my technology track. So these come back up. And now we're going to go to humanitarian sharing. So let me see if I can get this worked out here. All right, so I've got this worked out, so it's a little bit easier to do with just one hand. <laughs> Boom. All right, here we go. So humanitarian sharing says, first of all, if somebody is at level one, which we have, then we get level one's bonus again. So that means that I'll be able to put another cube into the yellow over there because that was level one's bonus. All right, so that's what humanitarian sharing does. If we have reached level one, then all players get a get level one's bonus. <clears throat> all right, so now we go down to the bonus area. So we're doing blue cards again, plus how many cubes we have in there. So if we look here, I have one, two, three blue cards. You also count these. You would also be able to count cards that you've gotten rid of that you've purchased in the past, but we're not really at that point yet. So uh, you have one, two, three, and then I also have two cubes over here in yellow. So that gives me five victory points, and that just goes into my tableau. And then we take the number of victory points that you got, which was five, divided by two and round down, and that gives me a bump up on my uh, technology track for science, just like that. And so now that that's done, we'll come back to this angle. And uh, humanitarian sharing goes over here. Um, their spirituality would bump. Uh, am I bumping it the right way? I want to make sure that I am. After a challenge... Yeah, it's to the right, two spaces to the right. So nothing happens there uh, because it was a spirituality and they're already at the end. So nothing else happens there. Uh, we bump up to round six and ready to go. In round six, we're going to get two level three leaders. All right, so we get, I'm going to move these down a little bit. So we can keep them all in order. Uh, bing. And we got a level two. Ada Lovelace and Winston Churchill have arrived. So there's that. 
All right. Uh, we are round six, and two level threes come out. So that's it. So these come back over here. And now we are in phase A. Uh, let's see here. The game isn't cheap. 95 Canadian. Seems like a good enough game, though. Yeah, not cheap, but production is nice. Uh, yikes. Well, 95 is... Um, I'd, that's Canadian as well. So I don't know where you are, Bushman. Uh, I paid 80 bucks at Dice Tower West for this, U.S. Um, so I guess it, it's about the same. Um, I would venture to say one of the best productions the game costs is Endless Winter. Uh, game is super nice components and cheaper than this game. Keep in mind that all game prices have gone up since shipping crisis a few years back. Nothing went back to normal completely since. That is correct. But most heavy, medium games are expensive these days. This is also correct. Screw shipping. <laughs> Put it on a raft and blow. <laughs> I don't know about that, Bushman. Uh, yesterday's $40 games are 50 to 60 bucks today. That is true. Uh, happy to pay more for high-quality games. Happy, to, happy with my Lacerda games from Eagle Griffin Games. Yep, that's true. Um, all right. <clears throat> so now we are in phase A where I can uh, determine what I'm going to be putting my stock into here. Don't really need those, do I? Could use those, though. So we'll do sacred text. One, two, three. Um, four, five. No. Ah. Oh. Yep, that'll be good. Uh, and then over here, I think I am going to go with this and that. Then I'll get rid of worship because sacred text has taken that place. All righty. Oh, man, I really need to get my population up. How can I do that? By buying now? There. Yep, that's what I'll have to do, I think. All right. Mm. All right. Uh, so that's that's my A. I've, I've planned everything out. So now B, we go to... I'm going to get two cubes over here in red, and then I'll also get one over here for the monuments. Uh, and that's it. So I come over here um, in round six... Uh, he does not move up, or it does not move up. Rome does not move up. And so, but I do, because I have three there. I must use it, so I'll go up one. I'll be able to choose which one of these I want. Oh, yes! I will take it. So that one's going to go there. Just like so. That gives me a bump up here, which means that I can have six uh, bump ups over here now. So that was that was cool. That that came out at the right time. All right, so that's B for this one. Then I come over here, uh, round six. They don't buy any of these. So round six, I have two here. So I could purchase either Constantinople or the uh, Library of Alexandria. Uh, oh, these were supposed to come out, but I'm just going to go ahead and purchase Constantinople, and it will give me two immediately, so that we'll just keep those right there. And then Constantinople is also going to give me another point at the end of the game. Uh, so that's pretty decent. So I'll move these down here like so. Uh, and I had to use those two things to do that. Now we go to D. Uh, and because I now have my population up to six, I can get one, two, three, four, five, six. So my spirituality track will go up one, two. My culture track will go up one. My science track will go up one as well. And my military will go up two. So that was one, two, three, four, five. What did I miss? No. It goes one, two, three, four, yeah, five, six. That's what it was. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I think is I'm going to use my four from science, and we're going to purchase 
mathematics. And mathematics gives me a bump up in brown, a bump up in red, and it also gives me a bump up on my population, which allows me to put a new cube out here uh, to use that later on. So now all of these come on back. And so at this point, we move on to phase F. Phase F is the fall of Miro. So we'll get this card out of the way real quick. So the fall of Miro is here. Bing, bada boom. So the fall of Moreau is five uh, for the military power. And first place is going to get a builder, a philosopher, and four points. Second place gets a builder or a philosopher and one point. And third place gets one point. So, um, all right. So we come over here. And this allows me to go two, four, six above. So this puts me up at 10. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't. It puts one of these things up at 10. These two come back. Sorry, I'm getting a little shaky there. I apologize. Uh, so I am in first place. So I will get a cube here and a cube there. And then it also gives me four points. So I'll just take these four points right here. And that is that for the Battle of the Fall of Miro. So we look at the next battle, which is Kimor, and that has the uh, strength of the uh, oppression up at eight. So we'll go ahead and move that up. And then uh, for round eight, he is going to be equal to them. So we'll keep that right there. This comes back and we're pretty much done. So at the end of the battle, if he was below me, he would try to go up higher, but he's still just as high as he can be. So nothing else happens. All righty. So Battle of Moreau goes back and we'll move this up to Round seven. Wow. If you've purchased a... Okay, so the machine tool says that if you've purchased a level three um, monument, then you get five points. Well, I don't think I'm going to get the five points. Just being honest. Because I ain't bought one of them yet. All right. So round seven... We have two level threes coming out. So both of these, these level twos need to go away. And we have two level threes coming out. So Broadway and Notre Dame is here. So those can be purchased. And then we also have one level three person coming out here. So we'll just put them right here. So Queen Victoria is also now available. Uh, let's see here. Um, I have Rebellion, still haven't played it yet. Uh, I think most I've paid for a game so far is about 32 bucks. What? I don't find any game to be worth its MSRP. Ryan, Ryan. Well, I can see that. But understand, Ryan, that, that the people who, the companies that make the game have to pay their people, dude. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I get it. If you don't want to pay it, I, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to buy anything. But just realize that an MSRP is there for a reason. It's, it's there for... Uh, and, and again, I'm not saying that games should be as expensive as they are, but there is a reason why they are expensive. There is because, you know, producing games are, are is more expensive now. Shipping games is more expensive now. Um, there's a lot of things that are just more expensive. When you have um, uh, good graphic design, um, all of that kind of stuff, all of that comes back to a person, you know, e eventually that, that is doing, is trying to make a living in what they're doing. So 
all of that kind of goes back. Now, artwork is a little bit of uh, a different thing because because often artwork is paid for before production, before you get uh, uh, royalties or or kickbacks or or not kickbacks, but um, uh, you know, sales or anything like that. It, because it, it has to go in on the front end, but everything else kind of has to be paid for. Um, so I don't know. I, I I get what you're saying, Ryan, but. Um, I think when you have games that are of quality, um, the MSRP is is usually um, not that drastic of a of a of a markup, um, and, and that's just maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a, a, a complete markup. But especially if you're buying from like a, a local store, uh, those people have to pay their people as well. And, and they're paying for that product that they're selling to you. So they have to recruit their money from, from buying that product at wholesale prices. And they also have to pay their staff. And they also have to pay the rent. And they also have to pay the lights. And they also have to pay uh, for their food at home. And, you know, it, there's a lot of reasonings why. I get not wanting to pay MSRP, but I, I might be a little bit of a... Too, a step too far to say that they aren't worth MSRP. If you don't want to pay MSRP, that's one thing. But to say that they aren't worth the MSRP, uh, that's subjective to the person, I think. So I get it, and I'm not really arguing with you. I'm just making a point. That's all, buddy. Um, okay, so let's let's go we've put out the new people so now i'm i'm deciding what i want to do here um so now i can have six of those thingies huh well goodness gracious um get two bumps over there so I'm gonna get another one there hmm hmm well I am at the point where I'm having to uh, make some uh, kind of beefy decisions here so I think we're gonna get rid of uh, we're gonna get rid of archery and uh, we're gonna use artillery because I want the the builder that's there and then, let's see, we're talking about, oh man, I don't have any brown cards. I'm about to get one though. Hmm. All right. Well, mm, I think I'll go with uh, mathematics over here. And then we'll do sacred text and writing together. Isn't that funny? All right. So that's going to be what I get there. Okay. Over here, I'm going to get. One builder, one unit, one scribe, and one philosopher. So that's pretty cool. All right. And level C, we are in round seven. So they will move up like so. And then uh, level seven, they do not buy another... Uh, monument and they don't buy another uh, person so it's just kind of up to me I can't afford anything here I could purchase the Alexandria library mm. or do I want to save up I think I want to save up oh crud oh huh. okay I think I do want to save up don't want the Alexandria Library because we're writing our own books. We don't need to build a library for them yet, just yet. Um, Okie dokie. So that's level C. That's phase C, rather. Phase, um, phase D is we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. We're still at six, so that's good. All right, so... Um, Green, we go up one, culture, go up one in culture. Um, per uh, science, we'll go up one. Spirituality, we go up one, two. 
and then uh, military we go up one two as well okay so um what do i want level four for everything but that so i could go there i could go there hmm could definitely go there but i already have artillery could go with worship. No, sacred text. I already have sacred text. Nope, I want to go with green. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to use all but one of those, and we're going to be despots. Uh, but despotism gets me one, two, which allows me to put another cube out here in my leadership thingy. And then I also get another uh, cube over here in builders. So despotism comes back here like so. Alrighty. Now we're going to, oh, I guess I should have brought, I should have bought a card, huh? That's okay. All right. So machine tool, come back out here uh, so you can see what's going on. Machine tool. All right. So the challenge is if you have bought a third, a level three monument, you get five points. I only have a level one monument, so I don't get five points. So we kind of skip that. And we go down here. It's a brown challenge. So we look at all the brown cards that I bought. I haven't bought any. That's orange. And I don't have any over here either. But do I have any over here? No, but just have a, a red and a blue one. Nothing, nothing going. So I have not done anything there. So, but I get that number plus whatever numbers I have out here. So I do have three cubes there. So that will get me three points. So I'll just take two singles and get a five. And then I have three. So three divided by three is one. And this is a bump up on any one research track of my choice. So what I think I'll do is I'll take a bump up with military right there, like so. And that is the end of machine tool. Now, since it was brown, we take this guy here and it's going to go down one, two, just like this. And that's that for the automata. Come back. All righty. So we're almost there. We are going to be in round eight. There's basically two rounds left. So um, level the seventh round card goes over there. Let's see here. What have we got? Uh, I went in all this on. I went all in on the series Kickstarter. Uh, that was expensive. Also, Eastern Western Empires is expensive. Both close to 200. Whew, wow. And that game is a pain because it's never going to retail. Yep. Well, that's part of it. You have to kind of do that. Spend a lot on Magic too. <laughs> Playing Magic this Sunday. First time in a while. Cool. Uh, I was an early play tester for series, so it was a bit special for me. Great game. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, play tested a few games always stresses me out. <laughs> I like play testing, so to, so uh, do a few others in my game group. We've play tested several games over the years. Sweet. Bushman said he play tested Old Maid and made some changes. I don't know if I believe you, Bushman, but if it's true, that's pretty funny. That's pretty cool. I like the AI art in this. Very nice. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this is. Um, this is one of the games where I do not mind AI art at all because I, I think what it has done is it's 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 all art that an artificial intelligence can probably work up from from historical pictures from the day. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I don't I don't necessarily care for AI art, but in this game I don't mind that it's been used because it works. So there you have it. Uh, let's see. Okay, there's that. Um, we've already done the automata over here. We've moved on to round eight over there. So now we just need to go back and round eight. We have one more 
uh, level three. So the CN Tower is now here. So the CN Tower at the end of the game gives you three points uh, plus two for every um, uh, monument that you've built. So that, that's pretty hefty, but I've only got one, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I do want to try to get some more... Um, I do want to get at least one more monument out there. I think that's all I'm going to be able to do um, by, before the end of the game. All right, so that is that. We don't have any more leaders coming out, so that's going to be done for now. Uh, we're able to get seven uh, square uh, cubes and bumps up on the track now, so that's cool. Uh, let's see. I'm at six. I need four. Can I get four? I don't think I can. No, but we'll get we'll get two. We'll use sacred text over here. And um, I think we'll use. I want to do at least four, so I want to do that. Oh, is that gonna? Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! I might not even be able to do that. I don't need to do that either. <gasps> no. I can't get a bump up anywhere. No. Okay. I have to keep that there. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> um, I'll do that there, though. Um... I guess I'll do this. Hmm. Okay. All righty. And we're going to get rid of writing. Because we got math. We're busy writing. We're busy doing math. We don't need to be writing books. Come on. All right. So that's that. Um, I'm going to get one of these and gonna get one of these and then one of these and one of those hmm all right round eight what do they do round eight they don't move up here uh they don't do anything here but they will purchase a level three leader oh boy all right, so level three leader are these three right here. And he wants the military one, so he took Winston Churchill. So Winston Churchill is out of the equation for me, which kind of stinks. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. All righty then. Fine and dandy. Okay. Uh, can't do anything. They don't do anything. I could purchase Agnes. But I don't think it's worth it at this point. I think I should save my, my money to get another one later on. So I'll wait. Over here, four. I can purchase this one, this one, or this one. Alhambra. That would get me... Two more cubes that I need over here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do Alhambra. And that gives me a bump one, two, which gives me two more cubes here. And we'll put this down, move this over, and move this one over here. Uh, and then it's also going to give me three points at the end of the game. So there's that. Um, I wonder if we go in that order, because then I have four. I could purchase something that I need. I don't think so, though. I don't think it's worth that. No, it's not. So I'm just going to wait. I might be doing that in, in the wrong order. Bing, bing, bing. That's the order it's supposed to go in. So I do that, and then I do that. So they purchase Winston Churchill, and then I have to purchase something. 
Um, this will give me, if I am equal to or greater than the threat, it gives me a population and a boost up on my choice over here. And then after he dies, or after she dies, it looks like maybe, yeah, after she dies, um, then if I'm equal to or greater than, I get a point immediately. Hmm. That would use four. Well, um... Am I going to make it? You, uh, yeah, I'm going to make it. Huh. Okay. Well, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, did I not? Yeah, i got to spin these. So, I think I'm going to spend four. I think I'm going to spend four. I'm going to spend four. And we're going to take this one. Confucius has been replaced with Amina of Zaria. Okay. Well, sweet, 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 sweet. All right. Now we go on to uh, round or phase D where I get one, two in military. Then I also get one, two in spirituality, and then I also get one in culture as well. We're going to spend seven of my eight to purchase aviation. So aviation is going to give me a bump up of one, two, three, and it's also going to give me one in spirituality and one in my um, uh, builder, builders. All right. So, now we go to Kimor. All right, here we go. We are at the place where this is becoming second nature. Wonderful. All right, so Kimor, um, the bad dude is at eight, where he's supposed to be. Uh, level eight, the uh, automata is going to be equal to wherever the external power threat is. So he is there where he is supposed to be. I am one behind as far as legacy strength is concerned. So now I get to add one, two, three, four uh, to my seven, which puts me up here at 11. And so 11 allows me to be the winner. So what do we do here? All right. So first place, we'll get a cube in religion or spirituality track. It'll also get a bump up over here on the spirituality track, research track, and it also gets me five victory points. So I'll take a five and put it back and then just grab a 10, like so. So there we have that. Okay, and that is that for Chimor. Go back to the regular board. Put Chimor back. And he's already up at the top. Nothing much I can do about that. These come away. Um, I was equal to or greater than the uh, person, the power threat. So I get another bump up in population, which gives me another cube there. And I also get to bump up on my, my choice of tracks over here. So I'll bump up on uh, do, 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 spirituality. And that's my leader's special ability. Now we go to round nine and enlightened governments. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, let's see here. We're going to go with... Um... All right. So round 
nine. This is the last round of the game. No new cards come out. So that's done. Uh, we come to, uh, let's see, the Solm. External power threat is going to be at 14. And the Automata is going to be at 15. So I've got my work cut out for me. I don't have any idea how I'm going to get all the way up there. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need at least nine power somehow. Chewy doggies. Um, all right. Well, let's see how we can get this done here. I need a way to get it in there. I'm up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to get four cubes down there. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I can get three, <laughs> uh, but I can't get four. Cannot get four. And there's nothing out there that gives me any more. Hmm. All righty then. All righty then. I just really need to get to 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Well, I think I have to use aviation just to have a chance. And then I think I'm also going to use artillery just to give myself the best chance I can. Um, then I'll use... Oh, wow. I should have... Now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that instead and do that. Yes. That's what I needed to do. I was dumb for not seeing that earlier. I cheated a little bit, but it's okay because it's a solo game. Um, it's not really okay. I just changed my... Uh, what I did was I changed my... my uh, I'll show you because I feel bad. I just want to make sure you see it. All right, so when uh, my leader gave me a free bump up on one of my technology tracks, I chose to take it on spirituality. But at looking ahead, I don't need it on spirituality. I really need it down here, though, to uh, be able to win that final battle. So I took it back here, and I went one more up here. That's all I did. Bing, bing. There we go. Funny note, bing, bing in Korea means crazy. All right. You guys aren't listening to me anyway. Um, so All right, um, so we are no longer desp despots, um, so that's good. All right, so um, we are done with uh, A, B. We get one, two, three cubes over here uh, in military, and then we also get two over here in uh, monuments. Um, then, starting with um, religion, uh, we're both going to go up because I'm going to go up and they also go up. So wing wing, just like that. And uh, that means we get to flip these over and choose. Well, looky there. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, choose military. So this allows us. Oh, snap. I should have got an extra one there. Dang it. Uh, gives me a point now, but this one gives you two because you get two of these. I didn't. I only took one of those late, earlier, so it gets two of those, two more. All right, I think I've got the battle locked in over there. That's cool. That is cool. All right, that's good, that's good. Hmm, all right. So 
Uh, that's that. Then we go to monuments. Uh, round three, they buy one round three. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, era three monuments. So that is seven, seven, sevens, these guys up here. So let's see, what do they want? They want uh, red. There's no red. They want green. Am I going to be able to purchase a seven? No. So they'll take the only seven that's here. Um, and because they're taking those points away from me. Uh, I have three available. And I think I might as well go ahead and buy the porcelain tower. Oh, I only have three. That's a four. Snap dragon. Hmm. Oh, well. I mean, if I don't use it, it's not going to get used. Well, every two cubes that are left in trays are worth a point at the end of the game, but this is worth two points. So I might as well go ahead and buy this. I ended up buying the library after all. How about that? Uh, but that does give me a bump up here and a bump up here. Um, so this can come down here, that can come down there. Now we go to a leaders. They will purchase a level three. So which one do they want first? They definitely want Queen Victoria. So that's going to happen. And then I have two, which... I could purchase Agnes. Um, I'm not going to purchase another thing, so it doesn't matter. Nope. I'll just leave it there for the point. I think. Yep. Yep or dipper. All right. So that's C. We go to D. And uh, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then, let's see, do I want the four? I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'm going to be going up to 17. I don't need that anymore. So do I want to use the seven over here? Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to use seven of my nine, so that'll leave me with two, and that'll allow me to have devotion. Uh, devotion gets me three cubes in spirituality. It also gives me a bump up here, and it also gives me a bump up on my culture. So... These will all come away like so. And, um, oh, these come away. Um, now, that's the end, right? Yeah, that's the end. So now we come over here to enlightened, enlightened governments. So, um, There we go. All righty. So, enlightened governments. What does enlightened governments do? Let me go ahead and pull this out again so you can see. So, enlightened governments here. Uh, first things first, I can take any of my purple cubes and move them to my blue cubes section. And then I can immediately purchase a bump up if I can afford it. So I'm gonna take both of these and put them over here. So now I've got five and I need five to go up a level. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna use all five of these to go up here. One, two, three, four, five. And then we get, ooh, huh. All right, all right, all right, that's not bad, that's not bad. So I can get three over here, just like that. That was a horrible hand hold, sorry. Um, so I chose to do the uh, the population dudes instead of the uh, bump up on the uh, track. Uh, that would have got me up to there. That would have got me a couple other points. Um, that's going to get me not two more points. Hmm. Okay. 
Yep, I'm going to I'm going to not choose this one now that I'm thinking about it. We're going to do this one instead. That gets me 3 bumps up on my uh 1 2 3 just like that. Oh, but I'm not going to use that anymore anyway. Derp de derp. One, two, three. Because I'm already in, I'm already doing this thing, stupid. I'm not going to do that. Boom. So I just get those three things. All right. That's all I do. All right. So now uh, the, the bonus here is I get uh, blue cards plus my scribes number of points. So blue cards are... I have one, two, three, four. And then I have one yellow over there, so that's five points. So I get my five points. And if I got two or exceeded 10 points, I get three points. If I got two or exceeded 13 points, I get five more points. I didn't get either of those. So weren't, weren't, weren't. But that is the end of enlightened governments. Now we're going to do the psalm. That's what happens in round nine. You go through the uh, challenge and bonuses, and then you go straight to another fight. All right. So uh, there's uh, they're going to be at 14, and then the automata is at 15. So I just need to be above that to get full points here. So I have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So 10 plus 18 um, plus 8 is 18. So that's what it comes out to. So that means I'm going to get 11 points. Like a soul. And that's about that for the round. All right. So, what am I going to be able to do? All right. Well, let's see. Do I have a... I don't have a... Dadgummit. I need to get a pen. Y'all, shoot. Uh, do, 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 do. Got it. All righty. All right. So, starting with... Um... All right, so we have Sam and AI right over here. Uh, these don't matter anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead and move this out of the way. So first things first, technology cards. That's all of these guys. Right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A measly eight points. Are you kidding me? Eight points. I'm doing worse than my game. Um, now, they are going to get... I'm just going to put these down here. So in blue, they're going to get 22. In gray, they're going to get 13. In purple, they're going to get 24. And then uh, for up here, they're going to get 16 more over there. So this is the points that they're getting. So they're getting uh, 2, 8, 12, 15. Carry the 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So they're going to do 75 points. And I'm just trying to beat 75 points. I don't know that I'm going to make it. Uh, because I'm just not good at it. All right, so these are over here. These are over here. Oh, boy, that sucks. Sucks, sucks, sucks. All right, so now we take our uh, spirituality track. So I got 21 here. All right, at this point, I'm winning. I got 29 to 22. What, what? And now we take our population um population did i get anything else there oh yeah because amina was still there so i would have gotten another one here so that's two points Ooh. uh so i get two points now i'm at 31 yeah yeah uh 
leaders. I got four points from Amina of Zaria and zero points from Confucius. So a whopping four. Oh, that sucks. Um, my, I get a whopping five, six points from that. And then how many points did I get? I got 20, 30, 38 points from that. 38 points from my points throughout the course of the game. And then I take one, two, three, four. Oh, wait a minute. No, I got it. Yeah, I got it. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I did that. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. So I got one, two, three, four. Uh, so I get two points from that. All right, here's the moment of truth, y'all. 8 plus 21 is 29. 31, 35. Psh. 35 and 6 is 41. 42, 43, 43 plus 8 is 51 plus 30, 81. That's right, in your face, Rome! All righty. Well, there you have it. 81 to 75. I beat the harder easy level. Rome. So I beat Rome. Rome is not Victor. <laughs> 81 to 75, only beaten by six points. That tells me that um, the harder levels will be very challenging. Uh, because I basically played it on easy level. Not the easiest, but I, I played it on easy level. And uh, um, I barely won. I mean, barely won. I told you easy victory, Matthew Benson says. Well, well, well. Down goes Rome. Down goes Rome. That is correct. Uh, if I ever wind up going to a big con, I think the most fun thing will truly be meeting a lot of the people I know online in the gaming circle. That is absolutely correct. I've been to many conventions, and that is still the highlight of uh, many of the trips that I take. Um, I love meeting people. Uh, now, I am, I am, I, I don't want to say I'm cursed, but I am unfortunate to have a horrible memory with names. So I will, uh, and screen names, even worse. So I will remember somebody's face, I will recognize them but have no clue what their name is and usually not be able to put it in context why I recognize them. So that's that's a difficult thing at conventions because I feel bad because people come up and they expect you to remember. Not nah, They don't expect you to remember, but I, I know that they want me to remember and I want to remember because I don't, I don't want people to feel like they are, you know, less in any way, shape or form. Uh, so it makes it awkward for me, but at the same time, I think a lot of people are very gracious in that respect, and I appreciate that as well. Uh, I don't have the heart to tell him the Roman Empire was defeated long ago. <laughs> I know, David. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, don't forget you also cheated. I did not cheat. I just backtracked, which is kind of a cheat, but... I changed my mind when I realized that it did matter. Uh, I actually met Eric Summerer once. He's one of the rare ones I met face to face. Eric is a cool guy. I got to, uh, uh, yeah, he was my roommate at Dice Tower West, and um, he's just a good guy, all around. Nice guy, very uh, congenial, very fun to be around. Um, and uh, he's got a really, He's got a really good sense of humor, but he disguises it well, and it's it's just fun to be around. Uh, Mikhail says uh, he's an introvert, um, but gamers are always very friendly, and I agree with Sam. I see lots of people. I have no idea of their names or where they are from, but I've seen them or played with them. Yep, that is absolutely true. Uh, that was at someone's house, not a con. Oh, well, that's, that's cool, too. That's very cool. 
Ah, la 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 la. Easy victory. Next game, nightmare mode. Always plays easy. Always play easy. I hate losing. Well, it's not that. I would not be now. What happens here is, if you play on absolute hard mode, where are those cards? Um. So just to give you an idea of what the AI would do, I'll go ahead and do this. I'll put these different cards down here like this. Uh, this one stays up there because that one stays, but these would go away. So what would happen is this would be replaced here. Um, that would be replaced here. And then this would be replaced here. So let me go ahead and get my phone and I'll show you the difference uh, between them. Uh-oh, did it go away? It went away. Why? Um It went it no worky worky anymore. Let me delete it and then try to put it back and see what happens. It's probably not going to work. Nope, not going to work. All right, I apologize. It's not working. But anyway, um, so on the spirituality track, if I used, it would have gone up one, two, three, four, five times. And would have gone up round two and round three, which means th it would have been put behind me, which means that I would not have been able to pick my bonuses as I stayed ahead of him. Uh, so that would have made things more difficult. Here, instead of just buying two uh, monuments, they would have bought one, two, three, four monuments, which could have possibly uh, changed things. I only bought three to begin with, and they were all cheap, so I don't know how much that would have hurt. Uh, but seven more points here, eight more points here. So uh, just these two alone, I'm already down uh, nine points. Uh, they have 90 and I have 81. And then over here, that would have stayed the same because this is the uh, hardest level of that card. And then this one right here uh, gives them fewer points. No, I'm sorry. Uh, it gives them five more points. And this one, uh, it mean, they would have always been stronger than plus three. So I would have lost the last battle. I probably would have lost that battle, no, I wouldn't have lost that battle, but I would have definitely lost the Somme uh, this round, and it would have given him five more points. So now at that point, I am, I'm probably down, uh, well, I would, have, I would have lost a point there, that would have put me at 80, and then it would have gone up five more points, so they would, it would have been 80 to 95. So I would have lost by 15 points instead of winning by six. So it seems like it's a pretty tight, a pretty tight game. I don't know that it's going to be easy to defeat, but I did score 92 points against Jesse the other day, and Jesse scored 95 points. So if Jesse plays just as well as she did against me on Tuesday, she would have equaled, uh, she would have tied the uh, more difficult person the most difficult AI. So that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, but again, that also throws into, are you using one of these different ones as well? Are you using, uh, you know, uh, their special ability playing expert mode? There's a lot of different ways to uh, kind of, kind of uh, make things a little bit different. So that's cool. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So that has been the solo mode of Path of Civilization. Um, I think I'm going to try to get a three-player game in. That's the only player count I haven't played yet. Um, so, well, no, I haven't played five either, but I don't think I need to play five um, because everything's done simultaneously. Uh, I don't think I need to play five. I've played once solo. I've played uh, twice uh, two player, and I've played twice four player. Um, I think I want to play three player and see how it feels, but who knows? All right, we're out of here. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on.
the flip side. Come back tomorrow, and we're going to be playing New York from Queen Games on our live stream at 1 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. I'm going to get that scheduled here in a few minutes, but uh, that's what we're doing next. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Have a great day.